Greetings and good Monday morning, the, make sure I get it right, the 13th of March. Uh, for anybody that's uh, partaking in this particular ritual, happy uh, 0313 day, uh, LAR crewman. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once again, it is March 13th, 2023, third decade of the, of the 21st century. If you're new to my channel for any reason, I always lead with that because I like to say it out loud to let it resonate, to let it kind of hopefully stick in your head that it is indeed the third decade of the 21st century and people had predicted where we would be and what we'd be doing and I always like to point that out in comparison to where we are, what we're talking about and what we're dealing with. Um, this I guess for all intents and purposes is more of a, uh, a reaction video if anything. Um, I had made a one-off video a little while ago about uh, accountability, or my my brief uh, my my brief thoughts on what I was talking about uh, in an effort to stimulate conversation. Um, my one viewer, uh, I have a few. Uh, some some of them are mostly my friends in my close personal circle, and most of the time they don't respond to my videos because. If they agree with what I'm saying, they don't want to perpetuate the cycle of an echo chamber. One particular viewer, um, Stace, uh, we don't see eye to eye on everything. We're about the same age, but we grew up in two different parts of the country. We had two different upbringings. Um, the sum total of our experiences have got us to where we are and have formulated our thoughts and opinions on any number of subjects. And for the most part, we don't necessarily see eye to eye, but what we agree on is removing the propensity for dehumanizing each other, removing the propensity to, you know, demonize each other and, and adversely label one another and, and all of that stuff that, you know, that picking aside and whatnot. Um, if you're also relatively new to my channel, I want to be upfront. As much as I try desperately to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, see things from a different perspective. I do have my own personal bias, and I want to be very clear about that. Um, I'm very anti-democratic party. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm against everything they stand for policy for policy, because I'm sure there are some policies they support as a party that I don't have issue with. Just going back on legacy alone, um, I, I have issue with their party. Uh, the, the best way I can frame it for you is if the Nazi party was still alive th to this day and still a powerful functioning party within the German government, but they tried to make the claim that you know some 50, 60 years ago they completely changed their thought process and they completely changed how they did business, so ignore the legacy. Um, I don't know if that would work. Um, so for me, you know, I, I could go into it, but that's not the point of this video. So I made a video about accountability, and I apologize in advance. If, for those of you that may or may not enjoy listening to my content from time to time, I've had the opportunity to spend some time with my daughter. She's graduating high school this year, and I don't know how many opportunities I will have to spend time with her. Last Tuesday, March 7th, was the 8th anniversary of my son's passing, and I didn't feel like putting out a video on that particular day. I think I've tried in the past, and it just becomes a bit of a bit of an incoherent ramble. So I, I apologize that I haven't been doing these videos in succinct um, succession of one another, but with that being said, my last video, Stace, first came out and said that um, she won't be commenting on that. Um, my natural instinct is why, you know, to try to stimulate conversation as to why. And at the end of the day, I, I've, I've learned that, you know, whatever it was about that video that she did not want to comment on, as a purely hypothetical, there may have been subjects I touched on that are very near and dear to her heart, and she could not remain objective or emotionless. Uh, and Stace, you're free to comment on this as well. Uh, but I'm not trying to provoke that. 
So, hypothetically, Stace did the most mature thing as possible, which was, I can't remove my emotions from this. I can't respond in a civil manner, so I won't respond at all. And I think that's very mature, and, and if that was the reasoning behind it, you know, I feel like a lot of us can take a lesson from that. <clears throat> With that being said, she more or less had asked me, and in, in, I, I view it as a request, to provide input on Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, roughly 16-minute video on anti-Semitism since he recently toured uh, Auschwitz. Um, depending on how old you are and how well you know Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, he was born and raised in Austria before his bodybuilding career exploded. Um, and he became the, 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 the Iron Oak, you know, the Arnold that we all know today. Um, so I watched the video and on the surface, if I don't dig any deeper, if I don't cherry pick, if I don't look for certain things, on the surface, his, his, his main message was, don't live your life in hate. You'll wind up miserable and you'll die miserable. And everybody that's ever founded any principal organization group based on hate has always failed. Leaving it that simple, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. I mean, even within our own country, the KKK, while it does still exist, it's not what it used to be. Back in the day when the Democratic Party founded the, the, Ku, the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, I mean, they were made up of like educated, you know, uh, socialites, people that were, you know, prominent members of the community, uh, senators, congressmen up in Washington, D.C., you know, local legislative people, school board members. I mean, it was a big deal. <coughs> the KKK was a very proud organization and, and a very big deal here in the United States, specifically in the South. It wasn't as big in the North. Remnants of the KKK still exist, but for all intents and purposes, they have fallen quite far from grace. They are not quite the educated socialites. They're not quite the prominent members of society. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it goes back to that video I made where modern day members of the KKK are basically looking for someone to blame for their problems. Um, at the risk of sounding like a bigot, at the risk of sounding mean, malicious, or crude, the modern day KKK is not necessarily made up of college grads and, and you know, high level operators in society. For the most part, they are what would most likely be classified as white trash. Um, but I digress. <clears throat> I've never been an advocate for bigotry. I've never been an advocate for anything that separates us. As I've grown older, as I've had kids, I found myself increasingly more concerned because of the world my kids have to enter and how do I prepare them for the real world without teaching them hate, without teaching them, you know, negative virtues, while at the same time keeping it blunt, real, and truthful. So getting back to Arnold's video, um, on the surface, you know, the, the simplicity of it was to not live your life in hate. And I don't disagree with that whatsoever. Um, I believe it was most likely inspired by his time visiting Auschwitz. If I had to disagree with anything, the first thing I would disagree with was whoever, made, whoever produced the video or finished the video using the Proud Boys. My limited understanding of the Proud Boys, based on some of the content I've been exposed to, is that the Proud Boys are not a hateful organization. They are not a segregationalist organization. Um, basically, the, the major media outlets have painted them in that light because the Proud Boys basically stand as a counter group to Antifa. They stand as a counter group to Black Lives Matter. Not that they hate black people or people of color, but they're basically sticking up for just regular people, people that don't fall in. So if you're a heterosexual, you know, then they stick up for the heterosexuals. If you're whatever. 
So they've been labeled a hate group by by the media, the mass media, the media that has been called out on numerous occasions. And for the most part, the, the best way I can say it is they've been called out, they've been caught red-handed, and basically the way that they operate is, yeah, and we say what you want to hear. At least if you come to us, it's because you, you're coming to us because we're going to tell you what you want to hear. We're going to go ahead and inspire your ideas, your thoughts, and your, your ways of belief. We're going to flame your, your, your fire of hatred towards other people. We're going to do all these things, and we're going to be very open about who we are. We are, you know, bigoted. We are one way. We are, you know, taking a side. We are a propaganda machine for the, the left, the woke, whatever. It's almost as if they've doubled down. So using the Proud Boys as potentially a source of hate, I don't necessarily agree with. If he was attempting to make that video as some sort of promotional propaganda piece for anti-right, then I disagree. If it was meant to be neutral, if it was meant to be objective, other than the Proud Boys, I, I agree with it. Um, I've never advocated for for hate. Um, if anybody's misconstrued me, if anybody's misunderstood me, in the pursuit of both of my degrees, I've learned some things. If that wants, if that needs to be taken out of context for for hateful purposes, then that is entirely on the person listening. All right, the the skamaktia or whatever it is, where you you only hear what you want to hear. You're your, your internal bias prevents you from, from hearing and seeing everything. When I pursued my degree on counterterrorism uh, via Homeland Security, I was shocked and amazed that within the Muslim faith, somewhere between 15 to 25 percent of all practicing Muslims have been radicalized and believe in the jihad and believe in anti-semitism so on and so forth um however that still that still accounts for as little as 75 percent as much as 85 percent of the major muslim world that doesn't subscribe to that the problem is if you just put it in pure numbers if there are a million muslims and as much as, tw if we split the difference between 25 and 15, and let's just say 20%, if there's a million Muslims in the world, and we know there's more than that, then at 20%, 200,000 have been radicalized. And they, they, hate, they hate the Jews, they hate the Western world, so on and so forth. Um, I, it was disturbing to find that out. As I pursued a degree in cybersecurity, it was shocking to learn that people that we would classify as our adversaries as far as China, Iran, other Middle Eastern countries, even Russia, some of the tactics that they employ at the cyber level. Um, but I digress. If you're trying to look for some sort of political affiliation, I'm anti-Democrat. I'm not necessarily pro-Republican. I'm very, very, I wouldn't say torn, but I find myself on an island. I'm not 100% pleased with the Republican Party, but in lieu of a better third option, I do tend to vote Republican only because there have yet to be good, viable third options. And what concerns me is if I'm essentially voting for the party line, I find the Republican Party to be less destructive than the Democratic Party, but I don't love them enough to to give them my soul. I don't love them enough to register as a Republican. Um, I, I apologize if I'm bouncing around all over the place. With that being said, getting back to Arnold's video, the hateful thing. It's always been my belief and my opinion with my, my open bias that only one political party has ever stood for hate. That only one political party has ever stood for separation of any kind in any way, shape, or form. And that's been the Democratic Party. Unfortunately, the Democratic Party has been able to convince people that don't necessarily align with modern-day Republicans that they are their party, the party of the little guy. And I don't know how true that is. Stace, um, I talked about quite a few things in my video. 
Um, I don't know if Lori Lightfoot was a sore spot for you. I don't know if Sam Bankman Freed was a sore spot for you, but um, from some of the people I talk to that still live back home that don't find themselves in the Democratic Party, Lori Lightfoot was a train wreck. Um, she basically campaigned on being all the things that she is, black woman gay, and less on her policies. And she, like, like Trump, she, she, she campaigned on a popularity contest, not a policy contest. That's what a lot of people are telling me. Um, and when it came, when, when the rubber meets the road and her, she had to actually perform the job. I heard she performed miserably. So, but at, at this point, I don't have a dog in the fight because I don't live there anymore, and I chose not to live there. As far as the Arnold video goes, it amazes me that there are still people out there that want to push the, the, the notion that Auschwitz never happened, the Holocaust never happened. It's, it's unfathomable and it's unthinkable to, to, to wrap our heads around that. And yet at the same time, we can openly discuss that, but we cannot openly discuss when Mao took over China, the millions of people he killed. When Stalin took over Russia, the millions of people he killed. Um, the the things that communism and fascism have done to the world. So, I'm going to go ahead and end it right now. I wanted to get that response out. Um, if you're new to my channel, I try to be as objective as possible. I try to build bridges of communication and, and increase communication explicitly among people that do disagree to demonstrate that we can disagree. I'm not nearly as popular as Russell Brand or Patrick Bet David, but you know, if you think that you're too little to talk to them, but you still want to get your, your thoughts out there, then talk to me. I'll listen. And if you leave a comment, I will read, react, and respond, and I will do my best to maintain my emotions and keep my emotions in check. Even if you try to do the typical keyboard warrior thing and incite some sort of emotional response because you're saying negative things, as long as you have some substance, I will do my best to read, react, and respond. And if you do, I appreciate it. You're awesome. Till next time.